Hi everyone, Brooks here with Colorado Customs 3D and I just wanted to show off the new engraving fixture that I designed for the Shapeoko. Um, if you purchase this fixture it will arrive pre-assembled minus the installation of your flex shaft which will have to be purchased separately. Um, it can use any flex shaft with a tool diameter of 20 millimeters. This particular one is very inexpensive. You can get them as cheap as I think seven dollars on uh, some of the import sites or uh, $10 on Amazon. Um, you just need to install that into this clamp with the four M3 screws and the included Allen wrench. Um, you want to adjust it so that the tool stick out puts the tip of the bit somewhere near the middle diameter of the vacuum tube. It doesn't have to be exact, but probably better to be uh, as close to the center as possible. I also like to trim my uh, burrs down so that the taper uh, fits just uh, close to the collet. This helps to reduce the effects of run out, which is really common with these flex shafts. You can do that with a pair of bolt cutters. Uh, works really, really good for that or hacksaw or whatever other cutting implement that uh, you prefer to use. So once we have that installed and clamped down tight, we want to go ahead and install it into the Shapeoko. That's really simple. Uh, there's a marking on the tool that shows the offset for X and Y. It's just 45 degrees offset. And then there's this little indexing tab that will line up with the cut or the slot in the uh, router mount on the Shapeoko. So simply insert it from the bottom, line up that tab, and push it all the way up. It should sit just about flush with the top of the router mount. Now we'll go ahead and find the Allen wrench. Okay, once it's installed flush, we'll go ahead and tighten down the mount. It doesn't have to be super tight, but you want it snug enough that it's not going to slide around. The forces involved with engraving are a lot lower than uh, traditional uh, milling, so it's this fixture, uh, it's solid enough for what we're doing, but um, you'll see it does have some flex, which is part of the design. So once we have that installed, go ahead and insert our vacuum tube. Now it's compatible with both two and a half and was that inch and a half or inch and a quarter? Um, those are the two standard shot back sizes. Um, so you don't need an adapter, which is nice. When you're inserting this, or anytime you're taking the the this, uh, vacuum hose in or out, check and make sure that you're not changing the sh the level of the. Uh, fixture, it has a tendency to slide down with a lot of force on the vacuum tube. So either hold it from the bottom when you're putting the, the vacuum tube in or um, you know when you're done make sure it's back up to the flush part so that your uh, Z offset doesn't change. Okay we're gonna go ahead and do a quick engraving operation. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and set my zero uh, on the shape of code, just like you would with any other bit. So for this file, it's down in the bottom left corner, so I'm going to go ahead and set it there. Now, I will say it's absolutely critical that your work surface be completely flat. Um, you'll see very quickly uh, any inconsistencies you have in your uh, flatness of your wasteboard. Um, sometimes it requires you to shim whatever uh, workpiece you're working on um, and sometimes it's just as much as the uh, thickness of a piece of paper um, to get it perfectly level uh, with the tool. Your engraving depths are so small that even the slightest bit of offset is going to uh, engrave the, uh, change the quality of the engraving. So I'm going to go ahead and check the Z height, uh, just like you would with any other bit, uh, using a piece of paper. Um, don't try to use the uh, touch probe with this, um, just because I don't think the tip of the diamond bits are going to be conductive enough. I haven't really run a good test on those to see if that would work, um, but my inclination is that you're not going to get a very accurate um, Z height with that. Okay, so we got a little bit of friction there, just enough. So we'll go ahead and zero the machine. Okay, machine is zeroed. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the dust collector. Obviously going to be very noisy, so if you're wearing headphones, uh, you might want to turn the volume down. And we'll go ahead and run this engraving program. This will all be in real time. I'll mark it if I speed it up on the video. Okay, so you can see we had a nice clean engraving. Um, it's a nice deep etch, much deeper than uh, like a drag bit. Um, this crosshatch is a tool in, um, I'm using Aspire. I think it's also in VCarve. Really like to see it in Carbide Create because it really uh, does a much better job of engraving than just using a, uh, a pocket tool path. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. We'll clean it up a little bit, maybe polish the edges. Probably could have set that offset just a little bit lower, but um, this is kind of just a test piece anyway. So if you're interested, uh, ColoradoCustom3D.com. Uh, I've got quite a few in stock right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's a good accessory, adds to the capability of the machine, and I hope you all like it. Take care.